many intermediate climber needs to know how to keep their hips in when they're on the wall. What I mean by keeping your hips in is deliberately twisting one of your hips towards the wall in order to get a longer reach on the wall. In this example, you can see I'm twisting and sort of dropping my knee in order to get to the next hold. And the same goes for overhang or cave climbs where it's essential not to let your hips sag too far away from the wall. Especially when you're going for a big move on an overhanging climb, you wanna keep those hips really close to the wall. You'll see later on some techniques you can use to help keep those hips closer, such as heel hooks or toe hooks. Instead of twisting your hips, keeping your hips in towards the wall also applies to slap, where you wanna keep your hips as close to the wall as possible. In this example, you can see I'm standing up and I try to keep my hips close to the wall as I'm standing. If your hips are too far away from the wall, you will notice that on slab, you fall off away from the wall and slab is always about trying to lean in towards the wall. You can't hear it in the video, but my clothes are actually scraping across the wall as I'm moving on this slab. That's how close my hips are to the wall. I can tell you that nine times out of 10, the reason you're falling on a stand-up dynamic move on slab is because your hips are too far away from the wall. When you're standing up, you wanna focus on your hips and really pull in towards the wall so that your hips can get as close to the wall as possible and you can balance when you finally get up to your straight standing up position on slab. The next most important technique point when it comes to intermediate climbing is gonna be flagging. So flagging is a climbing specific technique where you're throwing one of your feet out to the side in order to keep balance, twist towards a hold, or otherwise make uh, an aggressive move a lot easier. In this example, you can see first the back flag, which is when you put your leg behind your leg that is on the wall. And this will help create some backwards balance that you can easily twist up to a hold. Then we're gonna move into a normal flag, which is when you're just stabbing your foot out on the wall. And this helps you get some good distance out in the opposite direction that your foot is flagging at. You can see by contrast what it looks like when you don't flag. You can see my leg sort of wants to go in that flag position anyway. It's kind of natural for your foot to go there. But when you see I don't use it, it's a lot more of a powerful move and I actually fell on that move. So definitely use a flag when you see a really big move where you have to kind of cross and there's only one foot to use. The next one is a quick tip, but you can apply it to many different situations such as mantles or heel hooks, anywhere where your knee is trying to go over your foot. So in this example, we're rocking over on your toe. So when you have a toe on a volume or chip and you need to kind of get your hips on top of your foot, you're gonna rock over on it, which means you're gonna force your knee out as far away from yourself as possible in order to get your hips right over top of your foot or your foot chip. The same goes with a heel hook. Uh, oftentimes you'll only have the option to put a heel hook down, but both ways you wanna try to get that knee out as much as you can to the opposite direction. Of course, if you're doing a heel hook, oftentimes standing up off of a heel is a little bit awkward and you'll probably have to switch back to a toe at the end, but rocking over on a heel can be a little bit more secure feeling. And oftentimes, like I said, it can be your only option. So you do wanna know how to rock over on both your heel and your toe. Number four, most intermediates should be familiar with this by now. It is a bit of a beginner technique, but it can be applied in intermediate situations. And we are talking, of course, about heels down, the fundamental technique to climb on bad feet and volumes. Of course, with heels down, you want to keep your heels down when you are on bad feet, sloping feet, feet that are angled poorly. Uh, this can also apply to the wall if you're trying to step on the wall, which is called smearing. Now, of course, I don't mean keep your heels all the way down onto the volume, but I do mean try not to step too high with your feet. You wanna keep your heels relatively low in order to keep as much of the flat portion of your shoe, the sole of your shoe, on a volume or bad foot as possible. Now this heels down technique applies especially when you're on the wall and you're moving up towards a hold. Now it's one thing to keep your heels down as you're walking horizontally across a slab or across a big volume, but it's another thing to be focusing on keeping your heel down as you're going up. In this example, you're gonna see my left foot on a bad volume and I'm trying to reach up towards a crimp. Now you'll see in this example, I keep my hips far away from the wall and I keep my heel really low in order to maximize my surface area on that volume. Now, when I try to just stand straight up and keep my hips towards the wall, my heels don't stay down, they actually move up and I start to slip off of the volume. And this will account for most of the times when you slip off of a bad hold while you're climbing. It's because you're so focused on trying to get the next hold Oftentimes your hips need to be close to the wall in order to do the move, but your foot is on such a bad hold that the higher and higher you put it, the worse the foot gets and 
you often slip off of it. Now to combat this, you want to keep your heel down as much as you can. But of course, if you're trying to pull into the wall, that's not going to happen 100% of the time. So A, you want to have flexible calves so that you are able to keep your heel as low as possible while still keeping your hips towards the wall. And B, you do want to sacrifice your hips a little bit and try to just be super strong and keep your hips far-ish away from the wall while still grabbing the hold you're looking for up higher. So next we have to go through heel hooks because this is one of the most important climbing techniques you can possibly do. And if you master it, you will easily go from intermediate to advanced climbing in no time. So to properly execute a heel hook, we're gonna wanna place our heel on a hold and you're gonna point that heel down. Now you'll notice that my foot is almost parallel with the hold as I'm putting it on. And this is absolutely on purpose. You wanna point that foot as far as you can and the furthest I can point it is straight down onto the hold. Now, sometimes this won't be the case. Sometimes you'll place a heel and it'll just be pointed out kind of into the air. The trick with heel hooks is you wanna point it down and out. You don't wanna have it kind of perpendicular to the hold where it looks like a right angle. You wanna have it almost parallel with the hold, but pointing hard. And this is gonna put a lot of strain on your hamstring. So you wanna make sure that you're warm whenever you're doing heel hooks, especially big heel hooks on overhang. As you're moving into intermediate climbing, you're gonna see a lot more dinos. And dinos are super fun, but it is important to know how to do them correctly. So when you first approach a dino, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at it and size it up. You wanna see how far you have to jump and get your legs ready to do that. When I'm going up to a dino, I like to do one pump, so I, kind of put my hands on the start hold and I pull up and I kind of extend my legs without jumping off of them. And I take a look at where this dino hold is. And this will help gauge how far I need to jump. The rule of thumb with dinos is you want to jump further than the dino is to make it easier. Because the last thing you want to do is undershoot your dino and then you're not even grabbing anything. It's better to overshoot it because you can at least move your hands within this range in order to correct your over jump. But with an under jump, you can only reach up so high. So you wanna jump more than you have to. So once you've sized up your dyno, you wanna load your lats and you're gonna pull into the wall as you're going up. And of course, you're gonna extend with your legs as well. Now you can catch with one hand or two. Two is more secure, but oftentimes one looks way cooler. And sometimes one hand is the only one that can reach because sometimes you'll kind of dyno to an angle or you'll have a dominant hand that just likes to go a little bit further. Either way, you wanna pull towards the wall and latch that dyno hold. Now, oftentimes if you're too far away from the hold, again, your arms can only reach so far. So if you're too far away and you don't have enough of a good grip on your dyno hold, you won't be able to stick the hold. So you wanna be nice and close to the wall and close to the hold in order to grab and stick the hold. Finally, a technique that I find isn't quite as well known in intermediate climbing is gonna be your foot placement. Now, the first example we'll talk about is when you're placing your feet as you're walking kind of horizontally, I like to set up my feet in advance for where I'd like them to be for the next move. So in this example, you can see I'm sort of already placing my foot so that when I move my left foot over one more, my right foot is already squared up so my hips are ready to go and I don't have to twist my foot on the chip to angle my toe in the direction I want it to go. Instead, I've already placed my toe facing the correct direction so that it'll make the next move a little bit easier. Now this requires a little bit of forethought, of course, but if you know you're gonna have to switch or, or twist your foot afterwards, you might as well try to do it before. When it comes to foot placement on volumes on slab, the rule of thumb is to try to stand as far away from the wall as possible so that you're leaning in towards the wall as you're doing your slab. It makes it a lot easier not to fall off of these volumes if you stay as far away from the wall as possible so that you can lean in towards the wall. And of course, when you're leaning that far towards the wall, chances are you won't be falling backwards off of it. And if we're talking about foot placement, we have to talk about edging, which is keeping the edge of your shoes on the climbing holds. So in this case, you can see my toes are right on this hold. I have the most control over the chip. Now, when you have your foot in the middle, it makes it really hard to foot switch and it can put you into really bad position that you can't really get out of. The best thing you can do is just put the tip of your shoe on your foot chips. Now, sometimes little chips can be hard to get precise with your foot. A good on the wall kind of quick fix if you put your foot kind of imprecisely on a hold is you can just twist it. You can just keep twisting it on the hold until you find a comfortable position that you like. I do this all the time, you know, you'll, I'll place a foot, I'll twist it to get it nice and comfortable and in the exact perfect position that I want it to be, and then I'll keep climbing. And I probably do this on 40% of the footholds that I ever step on. And then finally, perfect foot placement also means 
putting your foot on the perfect spot in a hold. Now, it is important to identify where on a hold it is best to put your foot. If a hold is sloping either up or down, you wanna put your foot on the highest or lowest point of that curve. Any higher and all of a sudden you're on kind of a vertical plane and it's very easy for your foot to slip off of that. So you wanna put it right where it's just about horizontal.